Hi, my name is Richard Curtis. I'm a solutions consultant for Adobe with a focus on digital imaging. In the 2014 release of Creative Cloud, Photoshop got some great enhancements to the 3D engine, primarily 3D printing, 3D painting, and also faster 3D in general. Today we're going to look at bringing a 3D object into a 2D scene. We're going to paint it and then look at other things that we can do with a 3D model. Okay, so let's go into um, Bridge and just open this base file in Photoshop. Now with 3D in Photoshop, I'm going to bring in a, an object from an external 3D application. So I'm going to go 3D, 3D, new 3D layer from file and bring in a car. Now it's a fairly kind of cartoon car, but that's okay. Now everything in 3D in Photoshop is on the move tool, which I've selected here. And for this, I'm just going to um, move this around just by dragging the car around. I can also move the lights at any point in time by selecting the infinite lights that are available as part of this scene. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is to start painting this car. Um, and to do that, I'm going to select all the elements that I want to create um, UV maps for. Now, you can have UV maps as part of the model, um, but I'm going to get Photoshop to create them automatically. So I'm just going to go to the 3D menu and choose Generate UVs. And this will create me a nice 4K UV that I can then work on later. It will go through all the objects, unwrap them, and give me a diffuse layer for each one that I can then paint on in a few seconds. If I head on over to the Layers palette, I'm just going to work on a few, um, few areas and paint a few pieces just to show you how you can paint the 3D models in Photoshop. I'm going to focus on the headlights, the rims of the headlights, and the wheels for now. Um, so I'm just going to go to the headlights themselves, and I'm going to move this into uh, two up vertical. And I'm going to work on the UV map itself. I'm just going to reset my foreground and background colors because I want the headlights to be white. Then choose the paint bucket and paint this. Um, all I need to do now is save that, and it will save it inside the um, 3D PSD. I'm just going to paint the, um, the outside of the headlights in a yellow color. I'm going to move this into uh, two up vertical as well and do the same thing. This time I'm going to use a color picker and pick out that's yellow and then again do exactly the same thing. Of course I may want to paint directly on the 3D object itself so what I can do is um, just paint the tires. So I'm going to pick the front wheels to the right. Now I can move between the 3D model and the UV map. So at any point in time I can see exactly where I am on that UV map and actually on the 3D model itself. But in this example, I'm going to go direct to the 3D model. So I'm going to paint on this tire, just using a nice, large, soft brush. I can then go in and paint other parts of the wheel as well. I'm just going to go in and pull the color picker up, choose a, a gray, and I'm just going to paint the inside of the wheel, just like so. I want to paint this hubcap as well, so pick a darker grey for the hubcap, a different grey for the outside. There you go. I've overspilled a little bit over there, but I can correct that fairly easily. So you can see how easy it is to paint either on the UVs or paint on the 3D model itself. And I'm going to replace this car with a car I've pre-built. So here's what you can achieve if you really take a lot of time and get that exactly how you need it to be. So here's my, uh, here's my car now. And you can see now it's on the grid. Now ideally what I want to do is put this on a background. Now I'm not a very good drawer, um, but we do have a, a chap in the other studio, uh, Tony, who is a, a very good illustrator and, uh, and he said he's able to create me a, a background. Um, but what I want to do first of all is explain to him what I want. And, and I can do that using Adobe Sketch. Now I can go in here and create a new project to start working on. Now what I can do is send that to Tony via the Creative Cloud by just pushing the Share button on the, uh, on the iPad and that will go direct to Tony. And let's give Tony a call and see if he's able to create me an illustration for my, uh, for my car. Hi Tony, how are you? Hello. I wonder if you could um, create me an illustration in, uh, in Illustrator for my, for my car. Yes, Rich. That'd be perfect. Now what I've done is I've created a uh, sketch project on the iPad uh, using Adobe Sketch 
and I've sent that to you via the Creative Cloud, so you should have that now. Oh, I've got that. And uh, if you're able to do that in uh, Illustrator for me, make it really nice for this car, I think it'd be really cool. And then you could uh, share it back to me using Creative Cloud, the new collaboration features in uh, 2014 release, and uh, we can do that. Yep, not a problem. I'll start putting that together for you now. Okay, mate. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, mate. That's cool. Great. So Tony's going to work on that for me, and uh, he will then share the uh, asset with me using the shared folders and collaboration feature inside the Creative Cloud. So as soon as he's done that, I should get a notification via my Creative Cloud desktop application. And there you can see that Tony has now invited me to share the folder with him. So let's go and have a look at that. So if we open up the Creative Cloud application, you can see I have one new request. If I click on that request, I then see that Tony has invited me to the um, PS Cartoon Car folder. I can accept that. And immediately what starts to happen is the Creative Cloud will start to synchronize. Hey, mate. Hi, Rich. Yeah, I've just sent that across to you in a shared folder, so you should get a notification any second now. You've got it. Brilliant. Okay, and I'll just, if you let me know of anything that needs doing, Okay, you, okay, yeah, butterflies. Yeah, I'll do that now. Yeah, of course, yeah, okay. All right, thanks. Cool. Cheers, mate. Bye, bye. So you can see there that I've accepted the invitation from Tony, and now I'm sharing that file. So now I can go and pull the background in. I'm going to use um, Photoshop Smart Objects to do that, because it's an Illustrator file. So I'm going to File, Place Linked, I'm going to go to my Creative Cloud files, and you can see in here I should have Cartoon Car. And here is my backdrop, which is a, a lovely, uh, a lovely, very artistic uh, representation of, uh, of my uh, sketch that I drew uh, earlier on. So let's pull this in, let's place that into the, uh, into the document, and let's do that. I'm just going to resize it slightly, it's a bit bigger and also just change the crop size of the of the document to make it fit and there we go now let's just put the car in the place it's in the wrong place at the minute so let's move that layer underneath the car there we go there's my car in the scene uh, now what i can do is just um, pick the move tool at once again and pick my 3d layer and move this into position. Now, ideally, I want to be able to create a vanishing point grid. Um, so I can do that very, very quickly by going to the uh, filter menu and choosing vanishing point grid. I'm going to create a very shallow grid um, just to pin this car to and move it around. So it actually forms a nice perspective for me. And just drag this out. And then what I can do is I can change the camera um, and I can choose the vanishing point grid. Now what I can do is just move this back into position, moving backwards and forwards, but also up and down by moving the camera and placing the car in exactly the right place. If I click on the, on the mesh, I can change the size of the car, so make it fit in with the scene. I need to make sure it's snapped to the ground plane, so I can do that by going to the 3D menu, move objects to ground plane. Next thing we need to do is just refine the way that this car sits in the scene. And we can do that by looking at the properties of the 3D object itself. So I'm just going to go to my 3D panel and just go up to uh, the environment. And there's a few things I need to change. One of them is the, um, the IBL, the image based light. And I can do that just by going in and saying replace texture. And then put the same illustrated document onto the IBL. Now I can move that around and get it where it needs to, to be for the, for the lights to be working properly. Then I can go and move the lights and just make sure the lights are in the right place. I'll move it just over here. Um, the next thing you can see is that the actual window itself has got a reflection of a, another scene. So we need to make sure that fits in this scene as well. So I'm just going to go, go to the window object in my 3D layer and I have in the reflection a object. So I'm just going to remove that texture and replace that texture with the same one as the background, which is the Illustrator file. So everything matches up. 
So now that looks pretty good. And we can do a test set with the final render. So I'm just going to use a marquee and just render this image into the scene. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that so far. Um, but you know what? Tony's missed off uh, an element of the scene. I think it could be a little bit more, um, more funkier. And I think maybe some butterflies. So let's give Tony a ring and see if he can add the, uh, the butterflies in. Hey Tony, how you doing? Good. Yeah, just um, how are you getting with those butterflies, mate? Oh, cool. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. I can't wait to see the, the scene with the butterflies included. Thanks, Tony. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Great. So Tony's going to update the Illustrator document on his side. And because that's synchronizing across the Creative Cloud using private folders, I then get that content directly onto my computer via the Creative Cloud desktop application. It will then update automatically into this scene as soon as my computer receives it. So what I can do to finish this scene off is to add some motion using the new path blur feature. So I'm just going to select these layers and create a smart object from them. And I'll use this to place the new filter. So filter blur gallery, path blur. Create a little bit of motion just on this car, not too much, just to give that sense of realism. So I can dial the speed down, up and down to give me that sense of motion. So I may maybe just there a little bit. I can also change the blur shapes to give it some speed and direction. But I can press OK and apply that blur. Then using the masks, I can choose my brush using the B key and paint with black. So reset my foreground background palettes and then press the X key to paint with black and I can just paint out the areas that I don't want to be part of this blur. And you can see they've got a nice effect uh, using the new path blur feature to add a bit of uh, motion to the car. Now the last thing I want to do is to go in and show you how to 3D print this car if I wanted to do that. Just open the smart object up and just go into the contents and then using the move tool select the 3D object itself and then go to the 3D menu and go to 3D print. I can then choose a printer. So I could choose a local printer like a MakerBot or maybe an Ultimaker that we've now got, or even an MCOR or a ZCOP. Especially if we painted this, we might want to print it out in full color. And then we can obviously print to uh, an online service as well if we don't have a printer, using things like Shapeways or now the new Sculptio service to get some nicer materials. Um, but then to print this, we can just press the print button and Photoshop's going to create the um, scaffolding um, if we need it. It'll create a raft if we need it. It'll also plug any holes and um, correct the mesh just in case the mesh is not very good. And we're doing that in a couple of minutes so we actually get a really nice printable printable object that should print out fairly, uh, fairly easily from that uh, printer. So hopefully you've seen now how you can import a 3D model into Photoshop, how you can paint it, blend it into a 2D scene with a vanishing point grid, and then also how you can 3D print the model from Photoshop as well. So I hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.